Good morning. Thank you for joining us on the first day of the Liverpool Fashion Summit. Today, we're joined by Anu Menon from Freedom Row. Anu, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. No worries. How are you? Yeah, doing very well. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, we won't take too long, maybe 20, 25 minutes max. Um, but I think just so we get to know you a little bit more, I, I want to mm -hmm. start out with a couple of rapid fire questions. Sure. Because we can find out a bit about Freedom Row from the internet and your bio and all things like that. But yeah. if you were to explain to a 10 year old what it is that you do, how would you explain? I think I would say, so we help businesses figure out if their workers are being treated fairly, if the workers are being paid on time and what they actually deserve. Um, we, I would say that we want to ensure that all workers are free, just like you and I, to make their own choices. And we help businesses do that. Yeah. And, and when you say workers, is it just people in the host organization or is it the supply chains as well? Yeah. So it's basically the end, the, the first tier part of the supply chain for the for those businesses. Supply chains are complex kind of mechanisms and it's really hard for businesses to understand where the workers actually lie and our product comes in to actually track it plan it and then show them show the businesses where the workers are and whether they're being treated fairly or not yeah 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 cool i mean we'll come on to that in in a second but just another yeah. question for you because i heard this on a podcast the other day and okay. i love it as an intro question <laughs> what songs going around your head at the moment at the moment it's billy eilish's my future and <laughs> the, the melody is great i just love how how kind of sensitive she's she's kind of produced this song but actually the message is even more powerful like it's all about thinking about self-love and your thinking about your future and not having to depend on somebody else for love or happiness like love can come from within and you can think about all the other stuff in a couple of years but you know work on yourself first a lot of young people these days kind of like always trying to date and have somebody to be around them but actually you don't need it you kind of only need yourself that's beautiful <laughs> yeah it's I lovely think... I, I kind of you know through my um I'm quite I, I consider myself old now but in my 20s <laughs> I think I kind of went through that journey too of trying to you know find external happiness where actually it's actually from it within yeah Oh, yeah. Do you know what? If this video gets traction, you might have just broke the internet with that. <laughs> <laughs> but but so so let let's kind of continue on that path then. So you said you've been through, you know, this the 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 story of that of that song really, and mm. and you've now founded this this startup. Can I call it a startup? Is it a startup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you've now founded this startup, but it's taken you a while to get here, hasn't it? So yeah. how did? How did you get here and where did Freedom Row come from? Yeah, so, so if I start from my parents, um, my parents were both, you know, uh, my dad is a government servant and my mom worked in HR, just very basic. Uh, nothing business, nothing entrepreneurship. Um, so it is, it's not kind of running in my blood. So it was very, very tough for me to get to this point because mm. you have to break convention the mental models in your mind of like, I need to work 95 and this is how it's going to be. And if I will get a salary and this is how life will be. And it, it, I suppose it's innately in me, this entrepreneurship, but to get there, to know the steps to get there is a different matter. Um, so I start, I did the traditional thing, did engineering, um, went and joined this large multinational company and I was still kind of quite unhappy. Mm -hmm. um, what am I doing here? I used to work on oil rigs and, you know, did lots of interesting projects globally, um, but still kind of felt like a small cog in a big wheel. And uh, where is the impact? Like, I have so much to give, but there is no impact in this world. Like, I'm not giving anything other than 
doing some data sheets or something. And I think there was a very kind of pivotal moment in my life where I was on an oil rig and I, in the middle of an oil rig is usually like an empty space because it's a square, it's built around. And there was a school of uh, seals, is that the right word? I'm not so sure. They were frolicking and, you know, just playing around. And I was thinking, oh my God, I'm standing in this middle of the oil rig and destroying the environment. What am I doing here? Poor, I'm destroying destroying these seals lives you know like they should be in the nature and kind of something yeah. clicked so i joined the corporate responsibility department in my company and that it was there that i really found modern slavery um what people were doing on the ground um installing solar power for villages in india and I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, I'm in the right department. <laughs> and then after a couple of years, I realized this is a tick boxing, tick, tick box exercise, really. Yeah. Because we're just doing a lot of reporting. We're ensuring that paperwork is complete, that we have good scores so that we can promote the company really well. Well, I'm not saying that's bad. I think it's very good to have those processes and those... Um, items in place but again impact um what am i bringing to this other than just doing reports so i left and then we moved to estonia where i set up a vegan meat company because i was thinking a vegan yeah. meat company yeah so that's it was paradoxical quite... <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i know um but basically it didn't have any soy or gluten in it which is actually quite challenging to create so we worked with food scientists and worked with the Estonian government to develop this product but what really happened was because of my inexperience in in entrepreneurship it was all hype and less about the product and mm -hmm. when it came to the actually setting up a business there um, it was hard because I don't know Estonian everything was in Estonian uh, you would have to meet people and do paperwork it was just quite hard so I kind of left the idea and I moved to the UK and it was very interesting because when I first moved to the UK started reading up on modern slavery occurrences um, farm workers being caught not being paid and I was thinking this is a developed country what is going on this is yeah. very odd um, and I joined a I did my master's uh, in an agricultural, Doral Agricultural University. And it was there really through my thesis last year that I put together modern slavery, my tech background and, um, and artificial intelligence all together to analyze whether there was a space for technology within um, agriculture supply chains to mm. measure modern slavery. And I spoke to lots of different people from all over the industry. And yes, there is definitely a space for this. There's a lot of people doing good stuff, but there isn't an overarching monitoring real-time tool. And so I used that one year uh, to design the, the, the platform, really, and get lots of information. It's almost like a research project. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, now you, so, now you have to monetize at the end, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. So this this is the stage that I'm at right now, um, translating that into a business idea and getting partners and developing the platform. Yeah, I mean, so this is how we started talking, right? Because so Anu and I, we we had a little chat, and then we were just talking about agriculture, and then you mentioned about um, potentially it, the same model or the same platform could be applied into uh, into the fashion industry as well. Um, yeah, there are lots of uh, overlaps, I think, between agriculture and the garment industry and the fashion industry. Um, for one, workers not being paid on time, not being paid enough. What are the workers' conditions like? Are they being overworked? So lots of overlap, not only with the garment industry, with any industry, actually. Uh, it's a very um, overarching themes that happen and the modern slavery red flags are very prominent in, in every industry. Yeah. So, um, I mean, without giving away too many of your trade secrets or commercial secrets, you know, mm. I, I suppose we want to dig a little deeper, but not, not to the point where, where you're giving anything away. How, okay. how does it work? How would 
this platform work? So um, we look at modern slavery from three angles. One angle is the uh, monetary, so financial angle. The other one is behavioral. And the final angle is um, recruitment, employment contracts. Mm -hmm. And so we're currently looking at the financial element, which is our workers being paid on time. Are there large deductions? Because what normally happens is the process and the legality of that employee is fine is just that there is a gang um, recruiter um, illegal obviously um, stealing the stealing their money from them so from we can see that on a Friday evening when they actually get paid immediately a large amount goes out so that's a red flag yeah um, so we want to actually integrate with uh, workers' bank account transactions so that we can use artificial intelligence to pick out these red flags and say, oh, there is something wrong. Go back to the company or the business that, has, uh, that we work for and tell them there is something happening. Quickly do it. Be quickly get it resolved. Basically, uh, what happens now is that, for example, in the garment industry, um, if someone is coming to work with only like with only one set of clothes they are working long hours um and also uh if the people if the workers around them see oh they don't have money to buy lunch or they're starving or they look really thin these are the human um elements that we pick up which might take three months for us to actually say something but this platform will actually do it immediately if mm -hmm. they if we can catch it early we can do it three months in advance and actually stop a lot of other things happening within that three months to that yeah. person yeah amazing i mean it's I, I do i do think from from my experience and my research there absolutely need to be some tech in there yeah um just with you know with um, with the explosion of AI, um, machine learning and data science in the last few years, mm. I think you're really, really onto something. I mean, what's so what's what's the vision sort of for, for future for um, for Freedom Row or Future Row? What's the vision? For <laughs> um, we would like to actually develop a very overarching system that covers everything from the financial transactions to on the ground. Are they being bullied? So having using IoT, so having IoT devices, biometrics, GPS uh, within the working environment for that worker to monitor whether they're being bullied, uh, whether they what product are they working on, how much output are they doing, and then correlating that to whether they're being paid enough and are they overworked, and what's their stress level. So all this kind of accounts to again this red flags. And then on top of that, the em employment part of it, which is using blockchain and smart contracts to ensure yeah, yeah. that they have everything in place, their paperwork is all in place, and that links back to the financial element. Are they being paid on time and how much are they being paid? So it's kind of like a full suite of tools that will monitor that worker and protect that worker against um, uh, ill treatment, basically. Yeah. And and you say you're you're still building it now, but hopefully maybe next year we'll yes. start seeing Freedom Row up yes, in the yes. place. Exactly, I hope so too. Uh, we plan to uh, within the next six months create a prototype and test it out with some pilots. We've got lots of partners interested, and so we're we're kind of racing against the clock to get something out quickly. And if anyone here is watching this who wants to get involved or find out yes. more, then they can find you on Google, can't they? Yes, on LinkedIn. Just message me and I'll be, I'll be very happy to help. Amazing. And speak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> just, just very finally then, Anu, it's been, it's been wonderful, really insightful. Just before we wrap up, sure. we do have some uh, designers, students, consumers who will be watching this as well. I'm yeah. kind of think. I want to know from you personally now, not the Freedom Row side, but you personally, okay. and what you know about modern slavery. What's the solution? I think consumers are the biggest driving force. Um, so 
where you put your money is who you endorse, I think. So as a consumer, do go out to the fashion brand's website, read their modern slavery statements, see what they say. Um, some fashion brands will have a modern slavery statement, but they might not explain exactly what they're doing, which is kind of vague. So see what they're doing, see whether you support it, and then buy from that brand, support them and say, yes, you're doing a good job. I would like to, to endorse you. Another thing is you could just spend 15 minutes, write an email, ask them about their modern slavery systems um, yeah. to show that there is interest, that consumers really want this. Um, another thing that you can do is gain knowledge and share it. Um, I think modern slavery is kind of out of mind, out of sight problem. We buy things and we have no idea where it's come from. We have no idea who has made it. So gain knowledge in that part. Who ha where is it coming from? What are the issues in that country? Bangladesh, okay. Um, and then maybe email the brand and say, my, this product has come from Bangladesh. Can you tell me more about the factory and where it's come from? So all this shows a lot of consumer pressure that will change business processes, basically. Yeah. Um, uh, finally, is you should definitely consider volunteering at a local um, charity that supports modern slavery. To really yeah. know it is to really be on the ground and experience it for yourself and speak yeah. to the people who have been affected in the garment industry. Um, and then you being in the garment industry make changes in the, in the next couple of years when you are in, working in business and, and uh, in your companies. And uh, yeah, and finally, um, if you do see any signs of modern slavery, please go and report it. We have, you can go and report it to the police 101. Yeah. Or the UK Modern Slavery Helpline has an online portal too. So you, can, you don't have to call in. If you feel awkward, you can just uh, send in a report and they can follow up. So yeah. there's many things you can do. I think we just don't know that it's out there. And Yeah, maybe there needs to be, maybe we should do a campaign, some kind of information push, something like that. Yeah, but I, yeah, love, exactly. I love what you just said about, you know, where you, who you spend your money with is who you endorse. Yes, exactly. I yeah. totally, I, I try to be conscious with my purchases at all times. Yeah. Um, it's in this lockdown, it's a little bit hard because it's, you don't want to go out there and like do stuff, but uh, you just try to make the best. I mean, it's very, it's sometimes it's a lot of pressure for the consumers to, to make the right decisions you can get quite paralyzed with all the decision making and choices and all this, but try your best and a little bit counts, I think. Yeah. Try your best. Think about who you're endorsing. And yeah. as you say, write emails and ask questions. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's really like a one sentence is all you need really. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to tweet that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Let's steal your words. We'll, 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 tweet, we'll tweet it right now. I think Anu, I think we'll leave it there. That's been yeah, really, really interesting. And you're our first one as well. So thank ah, you for taking the time. Good, good. Uh, it's been a pleasure and I'm so happy to support you guys in any way and looking forward to the summit. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. hopefully see you there. Yes, yes, I hope to. I hope to be there. All right, Anu. Thank you very right. much. Thank you so much. Have a great day.